Back to That's Life Man, hosted by your favorite couple, Tanner and Chandler Man. The hiatus is over. It's We're been here. four months since we have... No way. That long? Right? We took a four-month break. I think we stopped in October. Well, this time, we're coming back with cameras. With camera. Oh, my gosh. If you guys could see the setup. We'll have to show on the stories. This is crazy. Yeah. We did, like, a, a whole setup for you and guys. And we will get more decorations and stuff, but... We promised that you guys would have this episode in, in January. January and it may be on the last day of January, but it's in January, but so. it's in January. So that's what we said and we're sticking to it, but we're back. Yeah. This is going to be uh, the new season. This is season two of that's life man podcast and we're freaking pumped. And our biggest request on the podcast was we want to see your faces we want to see the reactions. This is going to be fun. I can just think of some of the episodes we did in season one. And it's so nice because before we were sitting at this small desk mm -hmm. with two mics pointing different directions and I would have to turn my head just to see you. And now it's like we're just having a conversation. That's exactly what we're doing. I get why people have the setup. Yeah, it's nice. Because you can just, and my hands like... Right. You can really like get how people are saying things when you can see yeah. their face. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So a lot of things have changed since season one. One big thing changed. Are you calling me big? <laughs> <laughs> one one thing changed and it got big. Me? No, of course not. Tanner has a baby in her belly. We're pregnant. If we you guys are pregnant. we're pregnant. If yes. you missed it, if you missed the announcement. We're having a baby. We did the dirty. A lot. We okay. So we we've a been lot. trying for a while. Like, mm -hmm. how long did we try? Uh, nine months, ten months. So how many times did we do it? If we did it like, oh. like three to four times a week for mm -hmm. nine months, what is that math, Mister Mathematician? So what is that like? Forty-five weeks for four times, so one sixty. 180 times 180 humps if i th i think i did my math right it took to make a baby yeah a lot more than the first one the first one was one hump <laughs> yeah really i mean it was the like, first time it was the first ovulation cycle that we tried yeah like it was baby we decided we wanted to get pregnant we tracked oh, ovulation like, oh i was like oh i think i ovulate in like yeah two weeks yeah and then honestly, we were just I think we were just lucky the first time. I totally. think typical is what happened the second time. I think it takes as you get older, I think it just takes longer. I do, too, because like a lot of people ask, like, what did the doctor say as to why it took you so long? But well, yeah, we had the miscarriage as well. In oh, there, OK, so. yeah. If you guys well, no, we said that in season one. Like, yeah. we, we went through a miscarriage. But, you know, a lot of people asked, like, what did the doctor say as to like why it took you guys so long? But the doctor told us like it was very normal. Yeah. They didn't even really recommend that we go to specialists yet. They weren't worried at all. They were like people your age, especially like, you know, we're in our late twenties, which mm -hmm. is still very young. And that's when yeah, I thought so. people start trying to have kids. Well, you're 28 and I'm, I'm 27. 28, yeah. Some people start trying then you're right. Right. That's like a typical age to start trying that it's very normal to try for six plus months. Mm -hmm. Whereas we were just used to what happened the first time. I think we kind of expected it a little bit. Like whenever we decided, Oh, now would be a good time to get pregnant. Yeah. Z's at the right age. This will be a good gap between the two, but it doesn't always work like that. And let me just say this, like as like mentally draining as it was to like every month, like number one, think that you're pregnant, hope that you're pregnant. I will say that when we finally got pregnant, I was like, I understand why God waited yeah. until this Well, time. we didn't even think that we were pregnant. Like when you took the test, we didn't even think that this was like the first month that we didn't have like the, I don't want to say we didn't have hope, but we were just like, we're just going to keep doing it and we're, you know, we'll we see what happens. Yeah. Like every other month we're like, okay, it could be it. You were like, I, I'm having some symptoms. And I was yes. like, yeah, I kind of feel it. Yeah. And then this month I was like, I think I think her period's coming up around sometime. Yeah. But I don't know when. 
Well, I think like every single month it was so draining because like period symptoms and pregnancy symptoms are the exact same. Yeah. So you don't know what's going to come. Either you miss your period or you start your period and like either way the symptoms are the same. Yeah. But like every month there were some months where I was like, I know I'm pregnant this month. Like I know it. Like the yeah. symptoms are just too intense for me not to be pregnant. That and happened then, so yeah, many times. And then you weren't. And then I wasn't. And then this was the first month that I like didn't even pay attention. Well, no, I told you, I was like, I'm definitely not pregnant this month because I haven't had any symptoms at all. Like I've had no cramping. I've had nothing. And then it was like, I, Oh, I was like, I'm supposed to start my period today. And it was like seven o'clock at night. And I was like, I haven't started my period. Yeah. Which is so strange because I'm so regular. And we just posted that like when you, when you found out, you didn't like wait to tell me you came and like showed me. No, I didn't wait. Like, yeah. I don't know how people do that. Like some people. You did the first time with Z. You're right. Yeah. You the first wait. time I did. But this time this I guess because scenario. like we had had a miscarriage and yeah. we were like both trying like so, you know, every single month we were like on top of it, but <laughs> on top of it. <laughs> on top of it, below it, around it. All the, all all the, the things. Besides. At least we got to practice for a long time. Yeah, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I'd do it again. Well, we're going to have another one. A third? Mm-hmm. We'll see how the second goes. Everybody keeps telling us it's going to be the opposite of our first. Yeah. If that's the case, I might would be intrigued about a third. But if the third is going to be like the first. Yeah, but Z so cute. Oh, he's adorable. I'd love him more than anything. But we've talked about it plenty of times. That was He was not easy. Well, no, but I, well, I thought about this today because, you know, like we went through the whole scenario of like he had to have his adenoids taken out because like his breathing was so bad. Congested, yeah. I think that's why he's been such a bad sleeper his whole life is because he hasn't been able to breathe. I don't think it's yeah. his fault. No, it's none of it. It's, even if it was, it's not his fault. It's just who he is. I don't think anything. There's not much at kids' age at this age that or in their personality that is their fault. It's, yeah, honestly, it's the parents' it's fault. It's so much of yeah. It's like molding from your parents. So I don't think anything like that is his fault. But I, it's like at what age do kids start to get actual consequences for their actions? Where it's like if if Xander cusses, it's like oh, right now it's like we're just okay. teaching him. Yeah, yeah, like. He heard that from one of us or from somebody. Yeah. Right. So it's not like, and he doesn't fully understand. So there's a lot of things. I don't know why I'm getting on this feel about the kids and, and that part, but there's a lot of things that are like not, not going to be on them. And his yeah. sleeping is the same thing. It's yeah. not like he's a bad sleeper on purpose. No. I mean, he's just a, a freaking active little toddler yeah. boy. Like, but anyways, fif- 15 weeks. Uh, yes, 15 weeks? yes, we are 15 weeks pregnant mm-hmm. and and I'm feeling the symptoms, guys. I'm feeling it. So Chandler, whenever I get pregnant, which I have heard is like super common that like the men get symptoms of pregnancy, which there was a study recently that I've quoted a few times in the last 15 weeks that when the woman gets pregnant, the man will store fat in preparation for sleepless nights when the baby comes that is crazy i mean i believe it like yeah because there are so many times where like well when you're with someone so much like you kind of just like you're so connected yeah. you know on this level of like you're yeah. gonna feel what i feel it's like physically and emotionally like it's people even say sometimes that we look similar like yeah we could be siblings and it's just because you see two people together so often and so much that like they just kind of start to mold into one person and then especially when they have a kid that has the mix you're like oh yeah they're fam-. you start to think about it like families look the same but i feel and like it's hard because i'm on a show prep right now oh are you putting that out there now i'm putting it out there now so you're if, if you're watching the podcast well i better be i've been paying a lot of money for meals every week well, that's also just convenient. It's convenient, but I wouldn't be eating chicken, rice, and zucchini just for fun. Well, it's not just for fun. It's our lifestyle. Honey. I didn't understand, but I'd like put some sugar-free barbecue sauce on it or something. Yeah. I'm okay. If you're, plain. if you're thinking about doing a competition prep, think two times. I think twice. Before you do it, because it is not easy. Chandler just, this was his coming out of. <laughs> I came out. 
of he is on show prep. He hasn't really told anybody, but how many weeks out are you? Do you know? Uh, it's like 14, 13, 14. Okay. There's like three shows that I have in mind back to back, like within a month and a half before the babies do. And oh, wow. so. You know um, we're going on vacation a month before the babies do. Oh, yeah, I'll be fine. I just bring my meals. That's true. We're going to be at the beach. I'm going to be shredded. it will be fine. Every time I get pregnant. Imagine those photos. That's not fair. Our it's maternity funny. photos. I'm going to be like, you know what? I don't care. I'll be big and sexy. Well, why would I want to be like out of shape? Yeah, I guess you have no reason to be. No. So I'm I'm probably like 13 or four, just depending on the show. Um, I got a, I got a ways to go still. But yeah, I, I'm not going to announce that on any other social media platform. So if you listen to the podcast, that's the that's the straight to the source. Yeah. Show prep. It's not for everyone. It's no. not even for 99% of people. It is for 1% of people yeah. that just want to have a goal. It's, it's a crazy about sport a that you mm -hmm. have to be super disciplined for. Um, he has done it multiple times now, and it's crazy. It's a lot. Things get tense, yeah, it's even a lot. in the household. Like major weight swings in, yeah. in sh relatively short amount of time. Yeah. Like, I mean, you do it in a healthy way. It's yeah, eating yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very, very clean. Oh, I'm putting nothing but good food in my body and it's all being utilized. That's yeah. the whole thing is it's all being utilized, which is why you lose the weight that you do and you yeah. become so lean. You get down to a point of leanness that you really can't maintain. And then you have to know how to properly reverse diet out of the show. Yes. Yeah, so your body doesn't freak out. So that hormones regulate appropriately. There's a lot of steps to it. And I don't advise it for anyone that's not like committed and serious about doing it yeah and then you got to understand like some of the not side effects but some of the consequences that come with it yeah we could do a whole episode on what we think of shows prep yeah. prep life i know we talked about it a little bit before but not in but that not in depth detail. so you guys let us yeah. know if that's something you want us to go in depth on just like yeah. Everything like the mental challenges and everything. About so we're going to do 15 or 16 episodes in the season, season basically leading season two. Oh, season two. Basically leading up to the baby. Yeah. It'd be pretty close to that time. And um, so this view will be very different than week 16. Oh my gosh. When Chandler gets like down to like show ready. He is like a skeleton. Yeah. It is like, I love you, baby, like, but it is like not attractive. No, it's not. You get so skinny that I'm like, Ugh. it's not a look that you're like keeping want to keep or yeah. maintain. It's purely to get the, to the leanest level of body fat that you can get. And then to appropriately fill out on the days leading up to the show. It's yeah. there's a science to it. Like Anyways, we're talking specific. about the baby. Yep, sorry. Okay. I don't know how we got on that. I don't we either. We could talk about that. That's like a whole yeah. something we love to talk about and like we could talk about it forever. But yeah. today is pregnancy. Mm -hmm. We also announced that we are not finding out the gender, which we it, can. We have the information. Yes. But so we're not. Well, whenever we like found out, we don't know, but like whenever they, they found out the gender. They have an envelope sitting at the front desk of our doctor's oh, office. Mm -hmm. And they're like, if you want to come get it, come get it. But we're telling them to trash it so that we're not tempted, especially when we go for our next appointment. Um, we, we went back and forth on this for a little bit, but I, th I honestly think we're past the difficult part. Well, here's how you and I are as people. Once we make a decision on something mm -hmm. and we're like, okay, I'm going to do a show or – I'm going to, this is my business goal. Or this whatever. is my goal. Once we have a goal, mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. Like there is no if, ands or buts. Like we do not ever go back on it. So like we made that decision and like, we don't go back on it. Yeah. That's just how we are. Yeah. That's just how, <laughs> that's how we do it. But so a lot of people have asked like, why, why do you not want to find out the gender? I think it's a different experience than what we did in the past. We mm -hmm. found out with our first one because it was our first kid and I probably would find out again. Um, but this time it's like, it doesn't really matter Yeah. what we have, which you could argue it doesn't matter the first time, but I'm just a lot more eager to know what my first child mm -hmm. is going to be. Um, so now it's more so like, it's just a special moment where when this baby is born, I can say we're having a, or you'll, you know, when the baby comes out, that's like, you don't get moments like that as husband and wife. 
ever. No, and you got to think like this is in. I always go to this, and I think you'll make fun of me, maybe not. The history of the world and the history of the world, being able to know the gender of your baby, is like less than a percent of the time that the world has been around. Oh, it's like very new. If you think of all the children born, one percent of the parents knew the gender mm -hmm. coming into it because I don't know when I, I it's probably can somebody can fact check me but I'd say in the, somewhere in like the 1960s maybe so I don't know is when you think could be earlier than that start finding out it, it very well could be earlier than that 1900s I would think mm -hmm. um and so you just got to think that's only been around for like 100 years or so I which wish we still, had somebody that could fact check that right here by the camera. Which is still very re relatively new. Like. It's super new in the scheme of the world. Yeah. I, we talk about that all the time, like plane travel, cars. Oh, so new. All these things are so new when you think about how long the world has been around. And I think like in life, you never are truly surprised by anything. Like Everything. You can find everything. You can find everything out. Like you can. This. You can find anything, anything out you want. so quickly. And you're bad about that. Yeah. Like you won't even wait till the end of a freaking show to find out what happened. I'm about to not wait to the end of this podcast to look up when sonograms were a thing. Just go ahead and look it up. And so I think that like in the delivery room, just me like thinking about the moment of like when Chandler gets to tell me the gender of our baby and not, you know, um, a sonogram tech or the doctor or anyone else like it's it's the person that I love and the father of my child that gets to say that sees it first and gets to tell me like it's a boy or it's a girl like mm. that moment gets me so hype mid to late 1950s you so I was right. I was pretty close yeah so I think that that is like that's what keeps me like straight ahead of like not finding out is like it's just a, it's a new experience it's a new experience and i think that's another thing is like we crave th that like feeling of new yeah our generation does yeah it's not always a good thing yeah that like true. we crave that like almost like adrenaline like a surprise like a su or yeah a something new yeah and like this is new for us but it also shows like you got to be patient you yeah. gotta wait you gotta be diligent about what you're trying to and that's what out. everyone has said to me is like you know i couldn't do it like i need to know and we did the blood test that mm -hmm. would tell us if like anything was wrong with the baby that they could know that they could yeah. know prior to thank goodness it all came back negative so but what i do feel bad about is like someone made a comment of like you're not just making yourself wait you're making like all mm -hmm. of these people you guys wait, have to wait. Yeah. as well. That I do feel bad about. But imagine how exciting it's going to be for all of us to find out at the same time. To find out at the same time, because I'm not going to make y'all wait days. Like, no. Once the baby comes, we'll share. Hell yeah! Welcome to the man fam. I'll post a black something, just boy or girl. It's yeah. a black screen boy or girl. It's a, no, 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 no. I have this whole. I have. Don't even. Don't even put that out there because I have a whole thing that I would like to do. Today's podcast is sponsored by Stanley. Let's get into the. Why do you do this portion. every single time? Talking about us having a sponsor, but Stanley, Stanley if you do Cups, want to since nineteen. We are true Stanley fans. Okay, we, we did not like think that them. we would give into the hype of Stanley. It's the ergonomics, and we talked about this the other day on TikTok, but like. Stanley, look at that. I don't understand though why you make that movement with it. It's it's like it's all intention. If you're like, talking to someone, hey buddy, how you doing today? That's aggressive. Hey, can you 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 point to people to do that? Hey stuff? bud, like that. Cheers. <laughs> you cheers people. Mm -hmm. You don't even cheers me. Cheers. Hmm. Well, anyways, so what what else is new? We are not finding out the gender. Mm -hmm. We're pregnant um moved into a new house this is a new podcast room oh yeah new house who dis yeah we're you know set up in here and still getting stuff together yeah which life's crazy yeah life has been a little bit crazy but it's been fun is he still balling so running all over the place wild man his birthday's coming up oh yeah so we're getting ready for his birthday party he's gonna be three <sighs> which is crazy to, to think me. that we have a three-year-old i know sometimes i'm like we have a kid Right? And right? I'm Sometimes like, I look at him and I'm like, he's ours. Like, we made him and he is a mix of yeah. you and me. Mm -hmm. 
Like we did that. Yeah, we did. And I love that. It, yeah. And you can see it. You can see it. Oh, you it. can definitely see it. Uh, you can tell that he is from us. Mm -hmm. this, but doesn't, when I look at him, I love you more. Yeah. Well, it's because it's our, our love put together. Yeah. I and created love child. A, yeah. Yeah. Literally. And created this crazy human being. And um, the fact that he's about to be three is crazy. and about to be a big brother. Oh, yeah. So, like, a lot of people have asked, like, how, like, does he understand? Is he into it? And he yeah. does. He'll forget. But then, like, he makes cute comments, like, um, what did he say the other day? Like, randomly, like, I'm, I'm going oh, to I'm gonna share my toys and play with the baby. Yeah. And I was like, oh, or, or he'll be like, mommy can't have ice cream because the baby doesn't like it. He's going to be a really good big brother because he loves kids. Freaking loves babies too. Babies, especially. Like he is such a like lovey. attracted to babies. He's just a lovey kid. What a lovey dovey kid. Hugs, kisses. I know. We're going to have to rein that in. I know. It's like I try to tell people whenever we it's go like to the park. It's like he's French. I, he does. And I try to like tell people at the park because I know that the parents are like, why is he kissing my kid's head? It's because we kiss him 5,000 times a day. I'm like, he's very lovey and affectionate because like that's how we are at home. Like yeah. we are a very touchy, lovey dovey, kissy family. Yeah. Like that's how you and I are as people. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are as parents. Like yeah, that's, that's our, that's our, we're just that type. Like we're very lovey dovey hug. Yeah, even with friend, not kissing friends, but we hug like friends. We hug friends yeah. when we see them, and it's when it's been a long time. And yeah, like we're we're, we're PDA on an appropriate level. Yeah, I don't think we ever make people uncomfortable. I don't think so. I mean, but if we do, that's their problem. Yeah, get over it. <laughs> get but, over. It. I mean, I'm definitely like the type to like slap your ass in public. I don't like that though. Why? Because. um Something about you being dominant over me, I don't like. But it's not like a dominant slap. It's just like a little love tap on the booty cheek. Yeah, I don't like it. I feel feminine. So, okay. <laughs> Anyways. Let's get into let's it. Let's get into it. So, okay, it's January. It's 2023. What are some of your goals this year? I want to keep growing our businesses. Mm -hmm. I want to get into more business ventures. Mm -hmm. We'll get into the details because we'll let you know. You guys know everything. You know when I take a poop. So I mean, <laughs> that is so true. People like my family are like, like, how do you guys share so much of your life? And I'm oh, like, people know everything. I don't know. To me, number one, I'm an open book. Like, yeah, I am an overshare. Oh, I was about to say when Tanner gets in a situation where somebody else is being a little shy or quiet. What is wrong with me? Tanner's like. Do you want to know my social? I don't know what is wrong with me and like what psychological thing that is. It's something of like when someone else is quiet, mm -hmm. shy, or even if I'm a little uncomfortable, you know, in a situation, yeah. I talk too much. Yeah. And I, agree. I, and not only do I talk too much, I go into too much detail. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, you do. I can tell if I can tell that they're kind of timid in the conversation, I'm like, Hi, I'm Tanner. How are you? Yeah, last night in bed with my husband, he went a little too far. <laughs> like, don't tell him that much. You know what I mean, though. Yeah. Like, I don't go to that extent, but like, it is sometimes I'm like, I walk away and I'm like, why did I say that? How did we get to this? What were we talking about? Goals. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so those goals, we'll talk about them more as they come. Um, but to continue to grow the businesses, oh, little plug. If you don't mind, it's still January. This will come out in January. The Man Fam Fitness New Year program is still $99 right now. February, it'll go to $129. But here's the key you get our paleo cookbook for free if you buy in January. That camera just went off. Got to fix another camera. So, anyways, uh, we lost another camera. <laughs> I got to get this thing figured out. But um, if you just, Let's say it's February 1st and you're seeing this. If you DM the ManFam Fitness account, just let us know you saw it on the podcast. I will honor that deal for you. You didn't even tell me that. No. Breaking. <laughs> breaking news. <laughs> um, okay. Love it. Any, yeah. any other goals? That's that's my plug. Um, that's my that those goals were super broad, but uh usher in a beautiful baby and you know, take care of them and have a healthy baby and a healthy pregnancy. And those are those are the big things. Heard that. What I about love you? It. Um, 2023 goals. 
be more organized has was like one of my goals. We started that big time this week. It's been good. As of like yesterday, we started um, big time. One of my other goals. Oh, um, if you guys don't know, there is the ability to have a family calendar on on your iPhone. Yeah, on your iPhone. We calendar. just recently figured this out and we probably should have known a long time ago. But you can add family members and you can add events to your Apple calendar and have them go back and forth, which has been that's what we like really officially started doing this week, but we've been doing for a while. Yeah. I feel like we kind of live off that. And if we didn't, we would never have any idea like what's going on. But now we're getting down to like, you can put in travel time. You can put in, you can invite people. You can do a lot of stuff. Yeah. It's nice. I like how organized you are. So I'm working on that. Yeah. Second thing was um, to read two books a month. I got to get with you on the reading. I'm doing pretty good. You're doing great. I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, you're doing um, great. So I'm trying to read more just because like I feel like I needed something. I told you this like the end of last year. Like I needed something that wasn't work related, that wasn't technology related, that would just take me away mm -hmm. and like give me that escape yep. of like no TV. I didn't want to like be vegging. Yep. You know. You didn't want to watch new shows. You wanted to read new books. Yeah. And it had to be something like I needed something like realistic. Like I would love for us to go hiking. Well, like there's no hiking in Florida. I love to hike. I would love, love to go hiking. Right. It would be great if we could like take up hiking, but like realistically, we can't travel all the time. <sighs> but you know, well, know. you know, people do take their toddlers hiking. I'm trying to go to like Yosemite and yeah. really hike. Yeah. But um, another goal of mine is to stay active my entire pregnancy, which I feel like I've been doing really well. Yeah, I think so too. Um so yeah. far has been great, even with um first trimester sickness. Well, I just push through. Like yeah. I feel like I was like, I can either be sick in bed or I can be sick working out. And then I usually felt better after my workout today. This morning I was sick as a dog. Worked out, was not sick. Yeah. Felt so much better. Sometimes just getting up and moving. It is sometimes. And like I feel like it can be easy to be like, oh, I'm just gonna like lay in bed, but that can make it worse. Yeah, definitely can. And like now though. Like I was telling you last night, I feel like pregnancy with a toddler is challenging in ways, but it's also easier in ways because the time goes by faster and you don't have the option to just be sick in bed yeah, all day. Sure. Now, there are some women that like are really actually like really yeah. sick and I feel for them because that's awful. Mm -hmm. Like they're like throwing up every single day and that's Gosh, awful. I can't imagine it's that. awful. First trimester is a son of a bitch. Yeah. And some people are sick their entire pregnancy. That's just. God, pray your prayers for you people because that's it's hard. That's tough. I know it's hard. I think mine is just I've been tired. You're getting over the hump of the sickness. Though. I think so. Like I think so. You've been good. You've been really good for having any type of not just morning sickness. It's just been a random time. It has been, and it's like. Well, you've handled it like a like a champ. I think so. Oh yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, that's my goal is to stay active during my pregnancy. Still, just like eat as healthy as possible, mm -hmm. have my cheat meals whenever, you know, I need one. Yeah. Um, and then I can use a cheat meal right now. You just had one. When? At Disney. That was Thursday. True. It's only Monday. I know, but whenever <laughs> you're like, yeah. well, you know what I was thinking today is I was like, the reason that I'm not craving like cheat meals as much is because like I'm eating a good amount of food. Yeah. And so whenever I'm like, focused on like weight loss and like being lean, I'm always craving something because my body is like You're not, not as much food. satiated. Sure. And so I always am like, oh, I want chocolate. I want. Yeah. But right now, because I'm so satiated with like really good, healthy, nutritious food, my body doesn't really want anything. It's not craving mm -hmm. anything else because I'm like giving. Yeah, it. that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like Enough I really calories. Yeah. Well. I'm only like wanting a cheat meal like every seven to 10 days. That's good. I want one every day. I also think it's the, I also, this is last time when I was pregnant, I really was craving like good meat, like mm. protein. And it's the same way this pregnancy. We've been cooking good meat, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. I've been like craving ground Turkey. She's craving the meat. Well, you know, you're not giving it to me. What are you talking about? You're pregnant. Of course I gave it to you <laughs> plenty of times. True. Um, yeah, I, 
that makes sense. I mean, the more you eat, the less you're going to be, even if it's more nutrient dense, like whole foods, mm -hmm. the less you're going to be tempted to want to engorge on something else. That's why I, this is getting into fitness, but any, like when we write clients plans, they're like, is this too many, too many calories? Like, am I mm -hmm. eating too much? It's like, no, you're working on building your metabolism mm -hmm. so that you're not like restricting yourself so much that you want to go. And yes. like right now I am slightly restricting myself to lose right. fat which is why I want other foods. Yeah, of course. If I was just eating at my normal, and it's because for a show, you got to get to a completely different level of leanness than I would ever take a client to but anytime, that just wanted a plan. But anytime you're in a caloric deficit, it's going to be tough. Yeah. Like It's not supposed to be. You're supposed you to be start, hungry. Yes, yes. That is the thing. Is in, When you're in a caloric deficit, when you're hungry, that is a good thing. It means your body is burning fat. But you don't always need to be in a deficit. No. And that's what people don't understand. Yes. There are times that you need to eat at your maintenance calories for a long period. So even maybe a little bit above so that your metabolism it's is improving kicking. as much mm -hmm. as I like, can in a slight deficit, your metabolism can still improve, but not like it can whenever it's like, Oh, I'm getting fed this food. I need to burn it. I need to find a way to use these calories. Yeah. And if you're in a caloric deficit for too long, you're screwing yourself. Yeah. Your metabolism. Here's just... the thing. Things are always going to turn fitness related with us because you should hear our conversations behind closed doors. Like, yeah, it is this yeah like it is. shower talk is this yeah nutrition fitness working out metabolism healthy food the other day what did i randomly say i was randomly like man isn't it crazy how much fat is in an avocado <laughs> like you know what i mean like half an yeah. avocado so yeah. freaking good packed isn't it crazy that fats are nine calories per gram i freaking know people are worried about carbs honey <laughs> yeah but you need them you, you do they're fats. healthy fats yeah i mean they also like drive the way your hormones oh yeah regulate. like if you have a thyroid problem like fats you really need to like focus in on we were talking about babies well, anyways and now we're talking um, about fats we, and hormones we took z to disney this past weekend we went to disney world and and you know so that was the the cheat meal tanner mentioned was it disney yeah so what did i eat we're gonna um uh, you had pizza and a turkey leg you had a turkey leg i had you part had of a turkey leg he ate that cream. turkey leg up you had ice cream i had ice cream sunday when i was leaving and i had pizza pizza in the park of flatbread yeah it was good was it was it cheat meal worthy no oh i didn't think so i was like damn my cheat, cheat meals were meal like this. like a hibachi hibachi or like a fried chicken sandwich mm -hmm. with bacon and mayonnaise and ranch you usually DoorDash for your cheat meals yeah yeah and there's one particular spot over here that i get a really good fried chicken sandwich from mary's mm. but it's got bacon on it mm -hmm. mayonnaise ranch thing. a little bit of hot sauce it's delicious yeah so what was what was i saying disney we took z to disney and this is going to ruffle some feathers, an unpopular opinion, but. Don't go. Disney. I'm just kidding. Disney. You can go, but. How do I say this delicately? Just say it. Disney sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Disney. One. Well, okay. Here's a couple things. Well, here's one. We grew up going to Disney. So... We've been going to Disney a long time. Mm -hmm. Disney is a scam. Huge scam. One of the biggest scams in the entire world. Everything's expensive. The Not tickets even just have expensive. gone up. The tickets have doubled since we were kids. Outrageous. I get the things go up. Mm -hmm. But when you get in the park, you then have to, if you want to get in the, the lightning lane, it's $18 per person, regardless per of how person. many people are with you. The and everyone expensive. buys the lightning pass. Yeah. The, the turkey leg was like $15 just for the turkey leg. And terrible. The pretzel was like, 12 bucks just for a pretzel mm -hmm. waters are like five or six dollars it's like going to a, a like a pro sporting event everything is marked up like crazy you are going to spend less money if you go to the bahamas for a week than if you go to disney for a weekend and the hotels are insane 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 cost now it is an experience you have to go, to go at least once there, in your life it's an experience to go do and if you have kids around the right age i do think it can be worth it yes but it is just no going in it is going to be expensive and not only is it going to be expensive 
It's gonna be depending crowded. on the type of on the time of year that you go, which if you, it's in Florida, so if you go ten months out of the year, it's going to be blistering hot. If you go in July, you will see people just drop it, passing out like passing flies out. in it's, the park. It is so incredibly hot. Okay, yeah, everything expensive. Once you park, it takes forty five minutes to this get a, into yeah, the park. This is the Magic Kingdom. The Magic Kingdom. Once you park, you have to get on a um a tram a tram to that take takes two. you <laughs> to the entrance to get on a monorail or a ferry or a ferry, which then takes you to the entrance of Disney World. Yeah, you get in. They then tell us that our wagon. You can't bring a wagon. We can't bring our wagon in. So you have to rent a stroller. That's thirty dollars. That pissed me off. That was ludicrous. That because was. Re I'm like, you're telling me I can't bring this wagon in whenever I see a double stroller over there. That's twice the size of this wagon. Yeah. Ludicrous. There's no other way to explain it. And like, what do you think I'm bringing in the wagon? Like, I don't understand. Here's the annoying part. When you park and you take the tram to go get on the monorail, you go through a security section where they pick up all the stuff and they look underneath and mm -hmm. they check to make sure nothing's in the wagon. But they don't tell you. You can't bring the bitch in. That once you get it to the park, you can't bring it in. Literally, that made me so mad. And oh, I know we serious. sound so negative saying this. And like I said, it's an unpopular opinion. I actually think more people think this and they just don't say it because you, we have been brainwashed to think that we are supposed to love Disney, that Disney is the happiest place on earth, that it's magical. So all this propaganda your whole mm. life, you've been told. Yeah. This is a magical place that you yeah. are supposed to love you, yeah. and be happy. So everyone is afraid to think differently, but I think more people think it than you think they do. You got to understand that Disney is a business. It's a freaking business. And a very good business. Oh, oh, they are. Oh, my gosh. They make so much money. Which got, granted, like they they employ a lot of people, yes. which is great. I think there's there's a lot of benefits to Disney being here in Florida. It brings in a lot of tourist dollars. It does. It does. It the helps state. the state a lot. And people, Chandler and I were talking about this. Like, it is crazy to me that people will plan this trip to Disney a year in advance. And yeah. I get it. Like, if you live across the country, I get yeah. that. And then it's like, you're saving up for it because you are about to drop a ton of money. It is such a unique experience, though, because, like, where else can you go in the world where you can stay in this area and hit like five theme parks mm -hmm. that literally are, are by themselves in their own properties. Like when you go to, if you ever go to universal in mm -hmm. Orlando, you can see the highway, mm -hmm. like you can see cars going by. It's like, okay, like I'm at universal, but I see it when you're at Disney, you don't feel anything but Disney, but Disney. Well, because so fun fact, they told us that the parking lot of Disney is the second largest parking lot in the world. Yeah. They said and if you lose your car, you're screwed. It's $25 a car. And so it's that a just mile and a half you, from the park. That just tells you how much that they're making. Just in parking. Just alone. in parking. Yeah. Plus like the tickets and everything. It's every day. It's open and, every day. Wait, didn't you tell me you can't buy tickets for three for two days? You can only buy it for three days? No, no, no. There's different deals, but you can buy three days. I think you can buy five day tickets. Okay. And, and they spread them out. So if you buy like a three day ticket. You don't have to use it in three consecutive days. You and have to I, use it in a week. I also feel like we're kind of Scrooges about it because we've been spoiled living here, being able to go pretty much whenever you yeah. want to. As like a kid, we lived, I lived 45 minutes from Disney. Yeah. And my aunt worked at a business that like a lot of businesses in Orlando, you get free Disney tickets. Yeah. And so we would get tickets all the time. And so I feel like, I had my experience as a kid. And mm. then like now as an adult though, is whenever you realize like, it's like such a happy and crazy moment because like, it's awesome to see your kids eyes light up, but also Z was not that interested, yeah. but he's young. He was, yeah. he was too he young. He was too young. So that's part of it is like, I, I would say probably like seven, eight years old is a good age. I think five, six, I think five to six is fine because mm -hmm. then they're still interested in like Mickey and Minnie yeah, and like the whole younger kid type of thing. It's also a be prepared for a busy park, but to go in the summer and then be able to use like the pools and stuff at the resort. Yeah. yeah. That's another big thing that people like to do. We understand that Disney does a lot for the community. Mm -hmm. Disney also makes a lot of money. 
yes. and they will they will take every last dollar you have if you let them. So here's a tip that I read. We should have done this. There's a lot of tips out there if you like Google before your trip because we're not telling you not to go. No, I I think everybody should go. Everyone should go at least once. You have to. It is a rite of passage as a human. Yeah. You have to go to Disney World. Um, but if you don't, don't feel bad about yeah, not fine. going. Yeah, you're fine. Um, because only if it interests you. Only if it interests you. Should we talk about Disney adults? Let's not go there. No, you're gonna. <laughs> No, really ruffle some feathers. No, let's not do that. So not yet. <laughs> here's a tip. It's first episode back. Give it a minute. Before you go into the park, like gas stations and all of the stores, even at the hotels and stuff, like they have like swag. They've got like Mickey toys and all these things so that when you get in the park and your kid sees other kids with all of these toys and they're like, oh, I want a bubble. And they say they want one. You can just pull it out of your bag and you have spent half the money because of the That's toys true. and stuff in Disney – the bubble maker that Z got. So we only let him get one thing. That bubble maker was $32. Yeah, that's right on the dot, 32 And I was like, oh my gosh. I don't even think it works anymore. Uh, where is it? It's in the back of your car. He forgot. He, he doesn't Literally. care now. So like buy the toys or you know what? Order them on Amazon. Yeah. Before you even go I on your trip. I was so close to buying a shirt um, in, after the Buzz Lightyear ride. It was $65. A literal t-shirt was $65. And I was like, And it wasn't no. even like a Disney themed t-shirt. I liked it though. And I'm going to look for it on Amazon. Yeah. But um, I was like, no, I can't. I can't pay for that. I can't in my right mind pay for that. There's a lot of tips and tricks that will make your trip go easier. We went last minute. We weren't really prepared. No. Um, and if you want to stay on the campus. Book that way in advance. Way in advance. Because they said the entire campus was booked. I mean, it is Disney World. Whatever. That's that's that on that. That's Disney. If you want to go, go give it a shot. If you don't, you're missing something. You are missing something because it is an experience. But It is. Everyone needs to go. Especially if you have kids that watch Disney Channel at all. Because here's the thing. I posted about this on my stories, and some people were like, girl, you're so wrong. We had the best time. Yeah. And then... There were more people though that were like, I agree. Like it was miserable. Yeah. You know, it's, it's so busy. Depends on time of year, depends on your kid, depends on your patients, it depends yeah. on a lot of things. Here's what I would do though, if you are gonna go, you know, I I still want to do this with you. To go, we've done it one time, but I haven't done with Z. To go and stay at the Polynesian Resort mm -hmm. because I think it's the best one. Mm -hmm. I've stayed at all of them on the campus. And you go in the warmer time and you get you know, the weekend you get two parks, you go in the morning to the park, you come home to the hotel, you take a nap, mm -hmm. then you go down to the pool. That's the trick. And yeah. you just let the kids play in the pool the rest of the afternoon. And then you go to the Polynesian resort diner or whatever it is. The, all you can eat. All you can eat food. And they like bring it around and mm -hmm. cut it on your plate. That is the way to do it. That is the way to do it. If you're going to do it, you got to do it that way. Yeah. If we'd have done it that way, we might've had, we would have been better. Yeah. But it still would have been crazy. Yeah. But anyways, okay, so I feel like we have talked a lot for the first episode. That's episode one. Episode one, we talked about Season two, pregnancy. We talked about miscarriage. We talked about fitness. gender reveal, fitness, Disney. Yeah. We covered a lot of ground. It feels good to be back with you guys. It it's... does feel good to be back. I feel like you're probably going to feel the vibe through this first episode as like a little, like, rusty we're a little yeah, rusty probably a little and rusty. then it will get more and more comfortable yeah i do think it's probably more enjoyable to watch though surely yeah so this will still be on all your regular podcast channels um so apple Podcasts, spotify all those things we're going to upload the vodcast is that what it's considered i guess just subscribe to our youtube channel do you even know what our youtube channel name is we haven't been on there in a while it's it, been like it's a main year. fan vlogs right now i think it's tanner and chandler man Oh, you changed it. Yeah. And then, um, but it does have some of our old vlogs on it. We're going to create a playlist specifically. And here's for, the thing if we decide to randomly vlog, we might, we might, and we will put it up on this channel. So, we might. Um, subscribe to it. Yeah. Hit the little bell, give the alerts. <laughs> we're YouTubers. Yeah. Look okay, at that. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Well, we're excited for what's to come. We already like have a list of what our episodes are going to be. So, we're prepared. Yeah, all 16. Yep. And um, we're going to be talking about baby names. We're going to be talking about lots of things in the next couple of weeks. Sex so, positions. Sex positions? No, but we might throw that in there. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching and listening. And 
We hope you loved it. And if you didn't, that's life, man. See ya. Fly,